Grab your guitars and tissues. We're reviewing Dreamin' Wild. Press buttons. Let's do it. Dream and Wild from director Bill Polad is a musical biopic telling the story of Donnie and Joe Emerson, a pair of brothers who see a record they made as teens in the 1970s suddenly develop a following in the 21st century, long after they had left their musical duo behind. Casey Affleck and Walton Goggins star as the Emerson brothers and are flanked by a supporting cast of Noah Jupe, Zoe Deschanel, Chris Messina, Bo Bridges, and Jack Dylan Grazer. As of this recording, it has an 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Dreamin' Wild's runtime is 1 hour and 50 minutes. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the audience score of this movie, which pissed me off. 65% wow. audience score. Audiences don't really like this movie. Wow, interesting. I mean, so I the first thing I want to say is that we went to see this movie because it was recommended. It was given a hard recommend by a friend of the podcast who knows our taste very well, said this is probably a brunch movie. Boy, was he right. Extremely uh, brunch movie. Extremely brunch movie. Uh, this was a music person, so I knew that you were going to love the movie a little bit more than I was. And I would say that it fell short of the hype that was given to me. Like, I was told that it was an awesome movie with great music. And I would say that both of those things kind of fell short a little bit. It's not an awesome movie. No, it's not. But I love it. It reminds me of Air in that... This is like a sad air where <laughs> air was all positivity and you knew what you were going to get going into it. And it didn't surprise you in a ton of ways. This didn't surprise me in a ton of ways. It's Casey Affleck playing uh, Danny Emerson or Donnie Emerson. I'm sorry. Being the tortured artist, never really made it. And he's got this tough relationship with both music and his family because so much of it was intertwined. And I'll tell neither... you what, though, uh, Casey Affleck playing a tortured anything always does it for me. That's the thing. It was like it was kind of Casey Affleck porn mm -hmm. in a way, which isn't a bad thing because he's excellent and nobody gives a crying monologue like he does. He definitely has at least one of those. He's got a, a meltdown. He's got a crying monologue. He's perfect for this sort of thing. Although I did look up the Emerson brothers and watched a couple of clips of them. Mm -hmm. Massive liberties were taken by casting Casey Affleck as Donnie Emerson. Donnie Emerson, way more of a ham, way more outgoing. And there's a scene where they replicate a live performance that they did. And it was the only point in the movie where I thought, this doesn't really make sense for the character. And it was because Casey Affleck was saying exactly what Donnie Emerson said during this. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're giving a performance. Oh, and yeah. And he's saying, yeah. like, can't you feel the beach out there? And he's kind of making these weird choices that somebody as cagey as his character probably wouldn't make. But then you see at the – spoilers, kind of. At the end of the movie, they show some live footage of the two brothers performing. And you're like, oh, it makes sense for this guy who's clearly more outgoing – Make I these kinds of choices. I was told by a per the person that recommended the movie who met uh, uh, Donnie Emerson, quite basically the exact description you just really? gave. Really? Very different? Very outgoing, can can talk to like a wall, uh, just a, a very outgoing and uh, talkable person. Casey Affleck's Donnie Emerson, not much for talking. No, <laughs> not definitely not. Not as much in the mood for talking or doing things. And But, but I mean, it's... It's a very likable, sad movie. The music thing is interesting because they do have a kind of musical cast by incorporating Zoe Deschanel mm -hmm. as Donnie Emerson's wife, and she's great in it. I thought that uh, Noah Jupe, who played the young Donnie Emerson, was awesome. I thought, what's his name? Jack Dylan uh, Grazer, who played young Joe Emerson, was great. I thought that both young versions of the Emersons were awesome. And it's a family story. It's a music story. I feel like you end up falling in love with Joe Emerson, both young and old. Walton Goggins is fantastic in this. But, Looks I mean, fantastic. From the from beginning to end, like this is a very well-acted movie. Yeah, yeah. Casey Affleck kind of does what Casey Affleck is going to do with that sort of role, which I think if you like movies and if you've watched Casey Affleck movies, you'll know what you're expecting, but you're still going to be really satisfied. We recently saw Oppenheimer as did everybody. And the only bad note I had on the movie was like Casey Affleck's in it for one scene and he's not very good in it. And I'm not used to seeing Casey Affleck 
not good. They didn't ask a lot of him in Oppenheimer. Still, it seemed like he was. He was like bad. He was just the, yeah, no, like he was. I no, he was, like bad he was just scene. Casey Affleck. Go, you, go watch that scene. It was like he had, he was getting the lines in an earpiece, and he was trying to get everybody around him to be quiet so he could get get them out. It was like a rare time where you're like Casey Affleck, who I think is like truly one of the great actors of our time. Correct it was like, Ugh. and then you watch this, and you're like. There's my crybaby. <laughs> I yeah, like all the performances were great. Most of my issues were with um, like the writing and sort of like the pace. It, it has a slow first act, and it takes a little t- little while to get off the ground. Some of the dialogue is a little corny. I, I, I would say that this is a like a really strong Sunday hangover watch, but not much more than that. That's in my what book. air is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. I'm interested in this director, Bill Polat, I believe is how you pronounce the last name. He's uh, the son of the former Minnesota Twins owner, and he directed one movie in the 90s and then has just been an executive producer for a bajillion movies. Then in 20, what would it have been? Uh, 2014, he directed Love and Mercy, which was the Brian Wilson biopic. And then... He directs this in 2023. I thought Love and Mercy was really good. Yeah, like Love and Mercy is a good biopic, obviously great subject matter. And I'm like, yeah, good. And This is the next thing he directs. And I saw an interview with him where he insisted he's not just like trying to be the musical biopic guy. But I mean, if that's all he's doing, he's doing a good job of it. He's wants to direct a bunch of different things, but he also is a tortured musician himself. So I don't know. I find it very interesting that he keeps ending up doing these films about tortured souls who happen to play music. There is in this movie a comparison to Brian Wilson, and I did not know the music of the Emerson Brothers. I enjoyed it during the movie, listened to it after. Jesus, whoever made that comparison, not (laughs) even close. Uh, This movie is awfully mean to joe emerson throughout one of the things is that donnie is the good musician joe is the older brother and is very supportive of donnie and wants to help him in any way he can so he's in this band with him uh, but he's just not a very good drummer and both in their adolescence and in adulthood donnie struggles with like how do i kind of work with this guy he's, he's holding me back he's holding me back and then after you listen to the music and you're like, wow, the movie could have been a lot meaner to Joe. <laughs> like he was just a, like he was a very bad drummer. It's just like all very out of time. But that kind of gives it a charm, given that they were teenagers when they made this movie. I just did feel bad that every time they took a shot at Joe during the movie, I was like, Jesus, we get it. He's not that. You can't be that bad. And well, then I mean, you listen to the music, and you're like, mm, he's very bad. Yeah, and you could understand like that's like the crux of the story. <laughs> like it's two brothers. One of them is good, and the other one is not good. And like they want to do stuff together, but Johnny Emerson can't because his brother stinks. And as somebody who is not musically talented whatsoever and can't keep time myself. Listening to uh, "Baby" mm. by uh, by Dreamin' Wild or mm. Dreamin' Wild, Wild the album, yeah, uh, very distracting on the drums. Very, very distracting. Yeah, like you can hear how out of time it is, and I'm pretty sure at points it must have been Don. Somebody like just stuck a metronome into onto the track, so there was like some click that was keeping it in time. Un- unless like they had Don uh, Joe on such a loud click track to try to lock him in. And it still didn't really do the trick, but it did bleed into the mics. Who knows? It could have been anything. Uh, but I like this movie. I uh, obviously, uh, as a depressed fellow, I'm going to love the character of uh, of Donnie. And I was saying to you after, there's so many things about that character that to people who aren't depressed think, like, this character doesn't make any sense. He contradicts himself because his overall vibe is like, look. I'm trying to do stuff. Now leave me alone. I'm a failure. And it's like, well, what is it? Are you doing stuff? Are you a failure or whatever? And like, he's got all these conflicting things weighing down on him. And that I think ends up being so much more Casey Affleck than it might necessarily be the real life Donnie em- Emerson. But I'd rather it this way. If you're making a movie, give me the Casey Affleck cry baby. Yeah. I mean, so it, it, it the, the character, doesn't quite have like the charm that I wanted him to, 
Um, definitely like a tortured soul, but he is all over the place. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe it's not. But I don't know. This this movie kind of lacks a bit of charm in my book. Maybe I'm comparing it too much to like Juliet Naked, which mm. sort of has a similar plot where it's like a guy who was big back in the day, uh, you know, kind of gets pulled into um, like a comeback. And that movie just had so much fucking charm to it. And he was like such a likable character. And I don't know, like this was this one didn't really do anything super well. I, I thought that Bo Bridges was very good. Mm -hmm. I uh, there's a very good scene between Casey Affleck and and Bo Bridges, but I think that's the strongest part of the movie is like the familial aspect to it, like uh, how strong the family ties are, and like what uh, what Donnie's dad will do will do and has done for him, and sort of like just you know supporting the people that you love and care about. Got a uh, got a shout out Chris Messina. He is a um, he's a stool bar candidate on brunch. We of course uh, give out the stool bar every year. Somebody who is good in multiple movies, as Michael Stuhlbarg was in Call Me by Your Name, The Shape of Water, The Post, etc. That one year, the reigning winner, of course, is Hong Chow the last year for The Menu and The Whale. But Messina now has done movies with both Afflecks. And That's true. If there's any way to get up high on my list, it's in doing one that. year. That's in the saying. same year, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So shout out Chris Messina. He always does the Chris Messina thing, so he's solid. Uh, what are some positives from this movie? Uh, like it's 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 fine. Like it it's uh, it's, not it's a good positive. <laughs> I know. I mean, like I didn't dislike it, but I, I, I again, like I don't think anything really like struck me across the board. I think that it's uh, again, like one of the biggest strengths for me is like the family dynamic and the family sort of tale that's that's told here. I think that's really enjoyable. Casey Affleck in a Casey Affleck role. The brothers, both young and old, uh, very well played. Uh, negatives. Um, the, the first act is really slow. Uh, it takes a little while to get anywhere. Uh, and I thought the dialogue was a bit corny at times. Hmm. I will lastly note, uh, this is a movie, as I said, it's kind of like Air, uh, just for the other side of it, for sadness. Not Telling Tales Out of School, you did piss during this movie. I did. And uh, both of us actually pissed, and we felt fine and confident. We saw it on opening night, so there was no uh, run pee times or whatever. You're not going to miss a crucial part of the story as you're watching it because you can guess how it goes. Yeah, pretty much. You can fill in the gaps for sure. So I guess a predictable, like that, that could be a, a negative. Uh, what are you giving it? A three out of five. Oh, a very wow. inoffensive. Wow, I'm giving it a four out of five. Okay. All right, that is uh, Dreamin' Wild.